a very good afternoon all the participants those who have joined this fourth lisa annual conference either online or in physical mode the campus at vitu belgam so lush green that it is inviting everyone but because of the covid-19 restrictions majority of you could not uh, be here welcome you again online this is session 2 and uh, i'll be speaking on promotion of uh, open educational resources by lis professionals in the context of uh, nep 2020 we have talked uh, too much of uh, oers we also have talked uh, too much over these uh, two years we have talked much about uh, nep 2020 in in the in context of uh, india as we know the new educational policy has been adopted in the year 2020 2020 amidst uh, the covid-19 issues it was well taken it has replaced the old one which was adopted in the year 1986 and it was revised in the year 1992 almost 3 uh, 3 and a half decades old educational policy was replaced with uh, the new one which aims to change the entire indian education system by 2030 that means we have another 8 years or 9 years left to achieve that goal within 8 9 years this policy wants to change the entire education policy government of karnataka is one among the first to adopt implementing nep at the higher education level from the very academic year this year 2020-21 as you all know nep has a perfect vision of creating a new system which is aligned with the aspirational goals of the 21st century education while retaining the consistency with indians traditions and value systems see it promises that uh, the values and traditions of the indian educational system will remain however however a new system will come into picture that supports the aspirational goals of the 21st century education it wants to bring transformation of india into an equitable and vibrant knowledge society the knowledge society is uh, not the knowledge society under the concept of a philosophical system of subjects because india is a country where the knowledge system did exist since 5000 years but now the knowledge society is being spoken in terms of capital assets that kind of a knowledge society they want to create a vibrant knowledge society through a holistic development of the students this is what they promise this is what they assure us it aims to provide more multidisciplinary higher education more multidisciplinary higher education with emphasis on liberal arts approach and skill enhancement so these are the two other areas which have been focused in this policy very much it stresses on providing more learning space to the users of course learning space was there even now but they want to give more learning space and less lecturing hours spending more hours on critical thinking more hours on uh using the resources more hours on uh, discussions and other modes of uh, learning provision is made for increased access equity and inclusion 
through a range of measures and integration of ICT in higher education. So, this is what needs to be underlined here. So, the NEP will have ICT integrated education. ICT has already been, I mean it is there as part of our curriculum and everything, but now they want to take more deeper into our education system, which calls for making networked resources, particularly the educational resources accessible to student community. This is where the accessibility of the network resources, particularly the educational resources which is available on the net should be made available to the student community. This is where the focus lies, online in an open environment, online in an open environment where students are, I mean they can take the information they want in an open information. So, NEP supports building a conducive environment for developing open educational resources and promoting them. So, NEP perfectly lays down a platform to promote, it has, it has given a platform for us to develop open educational resources and promoting their use because it calls for networked resources available to the student community online in an open environment. Hence, an effort is made in this paper to discuss what is our role as a professionals. All of us we are familiar with the definition of uh, open educational resources. The most familiar one is that of uh, Williams and Flora Havlett Foundation's definition, which says uh, teaching, learning and research resources that reside in the public domain or have been released under an intellectual property license that permits their free use and repurposing by others. Very simple definition is given by that foundation, but quite meaningful. So, it stresses on that these are the resources that support teaching, learning and research, which reside in the public domain have been released under an IPR, IP license which permits free use and it also permits us to repurpose, repurpose it, repurpose it for our benefits and, uh, and all that, but uh, should be a fair use. In the United States of America, the concept of OER has been emerged as a response to cut high education costs which costed more to the students, the student debt was increasing day by day. So, the OERs were that they came into existence only in response to cut to the cut, reduce the cost of higher education, reduce the cost, reduce the students debt, but this is not so in the case of India. It has made an appearance way back in 9, 2007 almost 15 years back, OERs made their existence way back in uh, 2007, though the work has started somewhere in 1999. The premier organizations like IITs and IIMs were involved in developing the e-content in response to the UNESCO's call to popularize open courseware in higher education segment among the developing countries. So, in response to the call given by the UNESCO, these premier organizations started developing the contents, e-contents which were made available somewhere in 2007. The OER usage in India was not that significant till March 2020, almost two years back. All of us we know compared to the magnitude of higher education sector, but uh, it is not negligible as well. Content was available, few were making use of it, many were not aware of it, significant was not, it was not that significant, but it was not negligible as well. It was the OERs were looked upon very seriously only during the COVID-19 period only when 
The COVID-19 lockdown was announced by the Honorable Prime Minister of India during the fag end of March 2020. Somewhere in the first week of April, the UGC came out, came out with revised guidelines and higher education institutions have to start their uh, courses, the programs online. Suddenly, the online platforms like Zoom, Google, Cisco, Webex and many more even many of the platforms names we have not heard then emerged as alternative platforms to deliver the lectures which connected students and teachers which continued the process of higher education. Many guidelines were formulated then and in response to that many educational resources to suit the Indian education content was also made an appearance online. The huge surge of digital content is noticed during that period. Individual universities, institutions uploaded their course specific digital content. It has changed the entire mindset of all the stakeholders including LIS professionals. So, that was the period somewhere March 2020, April, May that was the period wherein the stakeholders concept regarding this has changed and all of them started involving themselves into this movement. This their potentiality has not been recognized, LIS professionals potentiality has not been recognized much during the COVID-19 period thanks to the publishers and others who, who have taken lead role except few individual LIS professionals, individual reputed university libraries or higher educational institution libraries which have responded to the situation, but not as a whole. Some later the libraries have started thinking over why not to include these things and all, but in the beginning phase it was uh, the individual teachers, the universities and uh, the publishers or uh, other open sources which were there. Uh, helped us to use this kind of a content. Yes, OER to support academics. Initiatives by the government, central and state, either to go digital or uh, transition to digital to support uh, the UNESCO's agenda as well as uh, Indian National Commission for cooperation with uh, UNESCO's uh, support. Apex bodies like UGC. ICAR, ICMR, NIC, NCTE, AICTE and many other PEX bodies have came with guidelines, have advocated for the use, use of uh, online content. Institutions of higher education had to carry out their functions either through the recorded classes or through online classes. Individual bloggers because of their self, self interest started supporting the higher education systems. Private agencies also participated that is what I said the publishers, but uh, majority of them were loose fit except those designed by the class teachers or the individual universities which have made all the plans to come out with these things. Many of the learning resources are now available to us. E Krishi Kshetra, Swayam MOOC, Swayam Prabha channel, Diksha, e Patshala, National Repository of Open Educational Resources, Nishta, NDL, EPG Patshala, e Gyan Kosh, Vidya Mitra, KSOU's Digital Study Content, Vijay Bhava by the Government of Karnataka's uh, and YouTube channel, Jnana Nidhi, and many free online resources are also available besides university or institutions, websites or portals carrying the digital content of their teachers of the courses which they have. So, many open learning resources are now available on the net, but now how to connect this NEP with the libraries? A cross section of the LIS profession believes that NEP 2020 has neglected the role of libraries. Lisa President Professor P. V. Konnur himself was one among the first to raise this issue in an LIS forum immediately after 
N. V. Satyanarayana took uh, charge, took lead in saying that uh, libraries are neglected in the NEP 2020. This is an issue which took place almost uh, in the in the month of two, in the year of 2019, when the draft NEP 20, 20, 2019 of 484 pages was released. The concept library was really used only 10 times in the text and one time in the list of eminent persons whom committee has consulted. In EP 2020 regulations, the term library is found only on four occasions in the context of uh, schools, secondary schools particularly, public libraries, adult education and digital library. These are the only four places where the term library is used, but 2020 NEP quotes Swami Vivekananda's statement on libraries. It also refers Takshish, Takshishila and Nalanda's universities and the importance that they had given to the libraries. NEP 2020 as I said earlier, it wishes to build educational system on the model of global standards and all global standards they call for the complete support of libraries, but this is the situation, then where do allies professionals stand? Not exceptionally mentioned except few areas where libraries have been totally neglected or underdeveloped. These are the four points, digital libraries are on the verge of development, the other three are completely neglected. The vision of the NEP 2020 itself is implicit, hence the role of libraries is also implicit. No policy can dream of knowledge society without libraries. This is impossible task, hence allies professionals have a major role to play, a vital role to play. It has to facilitate transformation by promoting culture of openness and resource sharing to create knowledge society and thereby national development. This is where our libraries have a firm role to play. It has to play, it has to expand its roles in the knowledge society. One thing is that it is the allies professionals who have a guarantee, who have to give guarantee to access the knowledge. They had to act as facilitators of knowledge resources, as facilitators of multimodal literacy also in an open culture they have a major role to play. This is where the allies professionals are supposed to have their own say. University libraries are well placed to manage OERs. A literature review of 10 to 20 years shows that they have the required facilities, infrastructure and many aligning factors. This was uh, the result of uh, University of Michigan library conducted by Kleimir, Kleinen and Hans in 2010, almost 12 years back and now even now it is relevant. They are well positioned to manage OERs. They are the only places where OERs could be managed academically and scientifically. Librarians have a unique position to help teaching fraternity to integrate OERs into their classroom. This is what Massey says in 2016. OERs play an important tools in digital environment. They provide access to enhance the quality of teaching learning process. Smith and Lee says in 2017, librarians will play multiple roles in OER including promoting its awareness, access and use of OER. They have the required skills, they are aware of OERs. Another study conducted by Upneza in 2020 shows that they have the required skills, but they have no role to guide in OER movement. So, this is where some kind of a guiding factor is required for the LIS professionals. As strong advocates, LIS professionals can 
provide users with access to quality OERs that is what uh, Davies and others say in 2016. So, they have uh, the as an advocate, advocate of uh, I mean usage of the information, advocates of usage of information, they, they can provide users with access to quality OERs. LIS professionals are known for handling many such educational resources. It is they who have the capability to handle such uh, educational resources. They have all the potentiality to deal with them. By virtue of their practice, they are experts in selecting, acquiring, technical processing, organizing, educating, preserving, retrieving, conducting literacy programs and developing institutional repositories. They have multiple roles to play. They have to expand their traditional roles by promoting and supporting the use of these resources to integrate the learning landscapes. Many opportunities are before them, many opportunities are before them. User community is too much crazy about digital content. There is a trend towards open access. Information is available in multiple forms on a global scale. This is one of the best opportunity to gain possible resources, more flexible materials from elsewhere. We can help the disadvantaged and advanced communities. Long term sustainability is one issue which is uh, an opportunity and uh, making them a reality is another opportunity and uh, the most important is it is an opportunity for us to prove ourselves that we are capable of withstanding any changes and it is we who are the facilitators of knowledge. It is our responsibility to prove our professional functions. Opportunities always accompany with the challenges. One of the biggest challenges that much of the content is in English, which is not a suitable thing for regional language students. Still there are certain legal complexities which require certain permanent solutions and of course, even with uh, common licensing and all those things, some kind of copyright and other issues still persist. The question of quality and lifelong education is another question because all these days we have seen any ICT invention has not uh, within 5, 6 years, within 4, 5 years they have become obsolete. The CD rooms which were one time were the kings, the supremes are now, they are nowhere in the picture. So, this kind of a uh, thing is also there, quality is one more thing, extra time is required to create these things, to support these things because uh, many of us are not familiar, we, it needs time for us. Convincing the user community that they are capable to use, they can use. Of course, there is a trend towards open access, at the same time uh, there is still a majority who comfortably believes in print dominated collection. So, we have to convince them that they are capable to use, Sustain sustainability and accessibility have already discussed. So, let us discuss this in terms of five laws of library science propounded by Ranganathan and reordered by the OCLC's uh, uh, Conave and uh, Faniel, who believes that uh, five laws of library science are not obsolete. Five laws of library science are still relevant, but only thing is user behaviors have shifted and user priorities have shifted. The five laws propounded by Ranganathan, you can see books for use, every reader his or her book, every book its reader, save the time of the reader, library is a growing organism. Second law and fifth law have retained their positions, second law and fifth law have retained their position. Whereas, the first law has become the third law, the fourth law has become the first law. The fourth law save the time of the user is now at the topmost, that is the first law. We have to save the time of the reader. We have to provide all the resources which are required by them. Every person his or her book, open ebook is also a source, open educational resource is also a resource which a user might want it. We have to promote. So, Faniel, Conaway and Faniel 
only they have highlighted that the priorities have shifted, not our roles, the behaviors have shifted. Hence, this kind of reflection needs to be inculcated into the profession, this is what we say and that is where we have the exact role to play in promoting the use of OERs. Who else can be better advocates than us? Who else can promote the OERs better than us? All these days we are promoting the books, the circulation desk people will be advising the people, but now instead of that let us advocate, let us promote the use of OERs. Only thing is it requires for us to discover, to discover the OERs, to evaluate them and build our own OER collection, build our own strong OER collection. Just not building, it is our expected role to preserve them, curate them because they are available in the digital format. We have to provide them the access, we have to facilitate creation and use and we also should uh, have our own role help in reusing this content. We had to uh, create blended course packs, funding opportunities need to be explored. Not uh, the sole responsibility for us, this could be an additional responsibility, but I still say this role also we can take, this role funding opportunities from different apex uh, bodies which will fund creation of OERs and all that contributing to the OERs to commons, framing IPR policies and standards, providing guidance about uh, tagging the metadata, who else can do this better than us? No one can, uh, I mean it is, it is we who have learnt metadata very well. So, we can provide guidance about uh, tagging metadata and uh, uh, so uh, collaborating with the stakeholders different stakeholders, talking to them, negotiating with them, bringing them to the movement and all that uh, is an expected role. It requires only adopting proper strategies. We know the user community, we are specialized in conducting use and user studies, we are also experts in assessing the user needs, we are well versed with the, the sources of information which we prescribe to the users. Hence. It is for us to prepare, identify and prepare the list of OERs, build, develop, organize the OER collection, convince the teachers to take up a translation work in case it is not available in the regional language, supporting them, identify the areas and suggest specific titles for translation. The best role is that we could play the role of a motivator in generating more local content OERs. We can be the motivators. We know the strength and uh, weaknesses of the collection which will support our regional students. It is we who can convince the others to take up the translation work and all that. So, we can be, we can play the role of a motivator. We have to create awarenesses, programs, make users confident enough that they are capable to use it. We can design the quality parameters, we also evaluate the OERs through the parameters that we have created and we can also conduct digital literacy programs to build capacity of the stakeholders. We can share resources on open education repositories, use communication as a most appropriate strategy, whether it is face to face interaction, group interaction or lecturing. We have to measure the success, not only measuring the success, highlighting, popularizing the success stories, highlight success across the campus. We have to find uh, friends of OERs to promote uh, them. We can effectively use the social media to create an awareness and promote the use of OERs, we can build our own message, we can build our own message. IFLA has rightly taken a stand that uh, librarians have to help making OERs a reality in these six ways. These are the six 
responsibility is assigned to the library professionals by the IFLA that they have to encourage the creation and use of OERs, ensure their availability, accessibility and visibility, curate and ensure its quality, advise on copyright matters, train users on ICT skills, encourage digital literacy. So, these are the six areas which IFLA firmly believes that LIS professionals have a better stand. To make it a reality, the message is clear. OERs have brought a second wind to higher education sector, particularly in the Indian context. Already pilot test has been conducted in the last two years in an online mode or in a blended mode. It was actually a pilot test for uh, NEP 2020, I, I believe. It has instilled confidence for the users. We have followed the doorsteps of uh, forward developed countries to level the playing field for Indian higher education system. We were on par with them during that COVID period. We were on par with the developed countries to show that India is ready for digital transformation. Higher educational institution should put efforts to construct an academic plan of action. There is a need to guide all to repurpose e-content in a manner that fits syllabi for a desired learning objective. There is a space for role of academic libraries. There is a space for role of academic libraries. We need not wait for the opportunities. LIS professionals have to take measures in raising the awareness among teachers, students and authorities on OERs, values of OERs, OER policy, open licensing, hosting and integration of OER into the education system. On the whole, I would like to sum up my lecture. LIS professionals have to involve themselves in OER adoption movement or else our existence will be in questions and our role will be taken by others and someone will put their legs in our boots and we may have to regret later. I thank Professor P. V. Konnur and organizers for having given me an opportunity uh, to talk to you on promoting uh, OERs by LIS professionals. I thank all of you for listening. Thank you very much. Thank you.